What is up guys? My name is Ebenezer Frimpong and welcome back to the channel. Now, if you're new to the channel and haven't subscribed yet, well then, hey, how you doing? <laughs> now, before I get into the details of this video, there's something I want to quickly point out because a few of my Instagram followers pointed it out to me after my last uh, YouTube video. And so did my little sister because apparently she also watches my videos. So what is it? Well, if you're looking directly at me right now, let's make eye contact. I know you guys see it. What, what, what do you see? Well, for some reason, if you're looking directly into this camera, it looks like I have a lot more hair right over here than here. Well, actually, it doesn't look like that. That's how it really is. Like I have more hair here than here because my facial hair just grows incredibly stupid. Uh, now, I've been trying to grow this beard for like two months and it's really not happening. And honestly, I should just shave it off because I look incredibly stupid, but we're just gonna persevere through it. So if you guys know any way I can get this to its full glory, drop a comment down below. Now, let's talk about today's video. Well. As you guys already know, we're in Q3 of the year, and pretty soon we're gonna be in Q4, which is the most profitable time for dropshippers and just e-commerce in general. Now, I wanna get you guys prepared with this video by teaching you the best product research methods of 2019 that you can use right now and you can use in Q4. And without further ado, let's get started right after this intro. <laughs> So just a disclaimer, the product research methods that I'm going to be going over in this video isn't for high ticket dropshipping. It's actually for low ticket dropshipping where you're dropshipping products from AliExpress. Now these specific product research methods are also really geared towards Google ads, right? Dropshipping from AliExpress and using Google ads to drive traffic. So that's the product research methods I'm gonna be going over. And let's actually hop into my MacBook and get started. All right, so we're inside my MacBook. Now, before we even get started with product research, we need to go over product requirements because you need to know exactly what you're looking for. So the very first product requirement, let's uncheck this, is monthly search volume, right? So the products that you're looking for need to have at least a thousand monthly searches. If it has at least a thousand monthly searches, I classified that product as a little fish product. And what's a little fish product? A little fish product is a product that by itself, you cannot hit six figures with that product. It's just not gonna happen. You don't have enough search volume to get that single product to six figures. It's, it's not happening, right? But a little fish product is a product that you can get daily sales from you need a lot of them to hit that high revenue goal that you're aiming for. So for example, if you have, let's say you have 10 little fish products in your store, right? And they're all doing maybe $200 in revenue every single day. Well, congratulations. Now you're hitting $2,000 in revenue every single day, which is $60,000 in revenue a month because you have 10 little fish products right there's not enough search volume for a little fish product to scale vertically so you need a lot of them so you scale horizontally so you have a ton of different little fish products in your store that you're driving traffic to or you can aim for a big fish product which a big fish product is a product that has 10,000 monthly searches or more because with that product alone you can even build a single product store around that product and scale that to the moon right you can definitely hit six figures alone with just that one product so you can either focus on finding a lot of little fish products or find a couple big fish products now there's no problem building a store in the same niche that have little fish products and big fish products there's nothing wrong with that you can start with a general store to test products and then pick your best products and build a separate store for them, that's completely fine. Now, the products that work the best on Google Ads, um, and just for dropshipping in general, are products that solves a problem, products that fill a void, right? What do I mean by that? A product that fills a void really fixes um, 
a person's insecurity or improves their confidence, right? So at the beginning of this video, I was talking about my beard. Now, granted, this is not something um, I'm insecure about or anything like that. And also, I'm a very confident person. But if I wasn't and I was really insecure about my beard, if someone was selling me anything that would help me grow a beard, I would definitely go for it, right? Because I want to fix that insecurity, right? Those types of products are the best products in terms of drop shipping because people are constantly looking for them. People always want to improve their confidence and fix their insecurity no matter the cost. Now, the next thing is find products that also saves time and money. Products that can also be very convenient. If it's a product that will help the customer um, essentially save time or it's convenient for them, makes your life a lot easier, that's a product that you can definitely go for. Now, granted, there have been products that aren't um, products that solve a problem or fill a void or they're not products that really save time and money or, or make someone's life easier through convenience. They've just been quirky products, like products that are super fun or unique. Those products can work, um, but for the majority, it's products like these that always win, products that solves the problem and fills a void, improves confidence, fixes an insecurity, saves time and money, and can make someone's life a lot easier through convenience. Another thing you also wanna look for is a product that you can charge a lot for it, a product that has a high perceived value, right? Because one of the things I see a lot of beginner dropshippers make is they try to sell products as cheap as possible. This is the wrong way to go about things. Do not try to sell a product for $9 because what you're forgetting is it costs money to acquire a customer, right? Yes, that product on AliExpress might cost you a total of 56 cents, right? So you, yeah, you're like, oh, I could sell this product for $9 and I'm just gonna, I'm gonna make, you know, $1,000 a day easily. False, that's not what's gonna happen, right? Conversion cost comes into play. And on Google, right now, the conversion cost that I'm seeing is around seven to eight dollars. So here's the problem: if you're selling the product that's nine dollars, right? Right? Yes. Even though it costs you less than less than a dollar to buy, it's going to cost you at least seven dollars in advertising and marketing to get a customer to buy that product. And guess what? You're left with you're left with a total of what three bucks? Wait, no, you're left with two dollars. If your if your conversion cost is seven dollars and you're selling it for nine, you're left with two dollars, and that two dollars is also going to disappear. Why? Shopify has fees and transaction fees will eat that up. And guess what? You did all that work to be left with eighty something cents. That's horrible, right? That makes dropshipping not worth it. So you do not want to sell products that are super cheap. My rule of thumb is to sell products that cost at least, at the very, 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 very minimum. $30, right? Up to $200. The higher the price, the better. And the reason why is if the average conversion cost right now is seven to $8, right? You can spend seven to $8 to sell a $30 product, or you can spend seven to $8 to sell an $80 product. You see what I'm saying, right? You're not using Facebook as your traffic source. So with Google, you want a product that has a lot of high perceived value. That's also very cheap. Um, even if it's not super cheap, as long as you can get a great markup for it, you're good to go. You might find a product on AliExpress that you can buy for $5, and if you can sell it for 45 or 50, that's perfect, right? So that's the things you wanna look for in every single product that you come across during your product research. And for monthly searches, you wanna use Keywords Everywhere. Um, keyword, it's a Chrome extension, Keywords Everywhere to look up search volume, or you can use KW Finder, or you can use um, uh, Google's built-in Keyword Finder. It's called Keyword Planner. I'll leave all three links down below, except for Keyword Planner, actually. Um, so it will be the Chrome extension link for Keywords Everywhere, and KW Finder will be down in the description. Keywords Planner, that's already in your Google Ads account. Now that we have that out the way, the next thing we wanna focus on is a tool that has been, essentially, it's been hidden um, a lot of dropshippers have hidden it. No one has really talked about it on YouTube. Um, I currently use it. I've been using it for a while. And it's it's completely free. It's a tool called Comma Feed. It's a website. So what does Comma Feed do? I'm actually going to walk you through how to set it up. So let's go over to Comma Feed. And this is what it looks like. 
So with comma feed, once you're here, you're actually just gonna register, right? You're just right here, you're just gonna register. And let's do YouTube, YouTube demo. And then password is, uh, let's, do, let's do this, boom. And then email address, youtube.me at gmail.com. I just kind of made that up. Register, hopefully that works, let's see. Save, I guess. Okay, so this is what comma feed looks like. And what it does is it can tell you when your competitors add products to their store. So how do you set that up? The first thing you wanna do is head over to right here and click this and click new category and type in dropshipping stores, right? And then you can leave this to all and just hit save. Cool, so now you have dropshipping stores. And now I'm gonna show you how to add a store to this. So you're gonna hit the subscribe button and then you're gonna type in um, the store that you come across, the, any dropshipping store that you ever come across. If it looks like a dropshipping store or whatever, you wanna add it in here, right? So the one we're gonna add is a store that I recently found called sharpvilla.com. And then you're gonna do forward slash collections, forward slash all dot atom. Wait for it to load. And you're gonna get the store name filled in as the feed name. And then for category, you're gonna select dropshipping stores and you're gonna hit save. Whoops, I think I added something in here. Let's try it again. Sharp filler. Let me double check real quick. Yeah, we're good to go. I don't know what's going on. Let's see. Let's try it again. Sharp, or maybe the store isn't called Sharp Villa. Um, okay, let's try a different store. Let's try bluecrates.com slash collections slash all dot atom and then hit save. Cool. So now it's added the store right in here. You guys can take a look right here. And Blue Crate actually has no items. So give me one second. Let me find another store um, that we can use for this example. Actually, let's go ahead and try Sharp Villa one more time. So you're gonna hit subscribe. And this time we're gonna do HTTPS colon, I believe that's what that's called, and then two forward slashes, and then sharpvilla.com slash collections slash all dot atom. And then we're gonna select dropshipping stores and then hit save. Yep, it worked, right? So Sharp Villa, here it is. You can click on it again. And what we're looking at is all the products that Sharp Villa has recently added to their store. So the last product, the most recent product they added is actually right here. Um, this was added on the 16th and today's the 24th. So that was last week. So click on it and we see the product, product description, pricing, um, and like I said, we see their description as well. And this is live, pretty much live, right? So if they add a product maybe two hours ago, it will still show up in here, right? And you can have as many stores, actually, let me take that back. I've added probably 200 stores into mine, and now it takes forever to load, right? So I, I wouldn't do as many as 200, but just from now on, every type, every dropshipping store that you come across, add it in here, right? Always add it in here, and now you can just, Come in here and do product research directly from your comma feed once you have a couple stores in here. Because if you have a couple stores in here, what you can do is just click on all, just like that, and you'll see all the products from all the stores that you've added right on this page. You'll see the most recent ones, and you can go ahead and test these products that other stores are already doing product research for and testing, right? It makes your life a lot easier. So that's how you use comma feed. And again, this right here will be in the description. This format right here will be down below in the description so you guys can go ahead and use that. Now let's go ahead and get started with the first product research method. And that's with Facebook. 
So let's go ahead. Oops, let's scroll down. So with this method, what you're trying to be, what you're trying to do essentially is you're trying to become Facebook's ideal customer. So an ideal shopper on Facebook is someone who clicks the shop now button on the ads that they come across on their Facebook or Instagram feed. But at the same time, you also want to be a top tier ideal customer and become um, an audience that Facebook can put you in when someone's targeting lookalike audiences. And there's a neat trick to actually get into a lookalike audience. And to get in that, you're going to be a purchaser. You have to buy, essentially, you have to get someone's Facebook purchase pixel to fire. And there's a way to basically manually do that. And we'll go over that. So how exactly does this method start? Well, there's multiple parts to it. So the very first thing you want to do is you want to find dropshipping ads. And there's a bunch of different um, tools that you can use to see ads on your Facebook, right? Now, the one I use is called Turbo Ad Finder, but there's a couple different options because a lot of people have said that Turbo Ad Finder, they can't find it in their Google Chrome extension store. I believe it has been removed, but if you already had it before then, you're essentially grandfathered in and it still works perfectly, but there's a couple of different options for you. So let's go ahead and show you those. So some of the options, like I said, Turbo Ad Finder, if you can find it, you can use Ad Hunter, Online Ad Spire, uh, Power Ad Spy. The, all four of them are Chrome extensions. And what they do is they hide all the nonsense on your Facebook feed and only show you ads, right? Which is great because you're doing product research. So you're just gonna go on your Facebook feed and you're just gonna turn that on. So I have Turbo Ad Finder and I just turn it on. And as you guys can see, now I only see sponsored ads. Right, so wait for it to load. Sponsored ad. Sponsored ad, right? Now we don't know if this product right here is a drop shipping product, but all you have to do to become an engaged shopper is to scroll down and just click shop now. Right, click that, wait for it to load. And once it's done loading, basically Facebook's pixel has fired. The the pixel on the store has fired and guess what Facebook now knows you're an engaged shopper and you want to do that for every drop shipping or drop shipping or e-commerce ad that you come across on your Facebook or Instagram feed now with this I don't really think it's a drop shipping product so let's keep going um, let's do wait for it to load again keep going this right here is most likely a drop shipping product uh, let's see three shares so it's not really doing that well so we're gonna just keep going and I don't know why my laptop's lagging but keep going this one right here let's click shop now wait for it to load and that pixel has just now fired so again engage shopper engage shopper that's what you're going for go back out let's keep going and see if we could find some more products let's keep scrolling this right here is definitely most likely a drop shipping product let's keep going see this right here this is a product that's 100% drop shipping product I've seen it countless times on Instagram and Facebook so let's click shop now boom yeah, this is definitely a drop shipping product because I've recognized it. I've seen it a lot of times actually. So we've clicked shop now. We've told Facebook, yes, we're an engaged shopper. But we can actually take this Facebook product research method to a next level. And I'll show you exactly how to do that. But before then, I just want to remind you that as you're doing product research and you're coming across stores like this and other drop shipping stores, don't forget to add them to your combo feed. So I'm just going to go ahead and add the store to the demo comma feed account that I set up. So I'm just going to copy that URL, comma feed, subscribe, paste it in here, collections, slash, whoops, slash all dot Adam, drop shipping store, save. And then let's go there. And the most recent product that these guys added was June 30th. 
and it's actually the product that we're looking at right now so there you go right so combo feed is really really important especially because once you're growing and, and you have a ton of stores in here it makes product research very easy for your virtual assistant when you get to that point but let's go back and let's take this product research method to the next level so we want to go as far as possible into this funnel as we possibly can so to do that we're just going to add to cart we're going to proceed to checkout because now that we've added to cart the add to cart pixel just fired we're going to proceed to checkout and we just initiated checkout so the initiated checkout pixel on facebook also just fired now to get into the lookalike audiences what we need to do is get the purchase pixel to fire and how are we going to do that without actually buying the product i'll show you how so what you need to do on this page is make sure you have the facebook pixel helper chrome extension installed if you don't have the facebook pixel helper chrome extension installed the link for it will be down below in the description now as you guys can see this initiate checkout pixel has a green check mark to it because why that's letting us know that that pixel has fired and what you're going to do is you're actually going to click that and you need two pieces of information in here you need the content id and then you need the value so let's copy this just like that copy let's go back to our notes boom and none and we're going to paste that content id right in this box that says x just like that boom and then value let's go back and get that the value is 49.99 so let's do 49.99 and then you're going to copy this whole thing but i like to make everything the same font so let's highlight this times new roman size 12 and let's copy and then we're going to come back in here and here we're going to hit control not control we're going to go to inspect element like that and then you're going to go to console right up top and you're going to paste that snippet in here and then just hit enter and it's going to say undefined and then click the x button and then click your facebook pixel helper again and now look what is this we just made the purchase pixel on the store fire so now we're inside the lookalike audience so if other dropshippers you know start testing lookalike audiences we're more likely to see that ad even though we never bought one of their products make sense exactly so now you're gonna see more and more dropshipping ads on your feed on Instagram and Facebook which is great for you because that's one of the best ways for product research. So there you have it. But there's also another way to find dropshipping ads and dropshipping stores on Facebook. This is gonna go back to Facebook and instead of using the Turbo Ad Finder, it's gonna turn that off. And then in your search box, you're just gonna type in things like free shipping or, or get now. So free shipping. And you want to scroll all the way down to date posted and select 2019 and then go to videos right and you're just gonna look through and look to see look to find um, other dropshipping stores right so this one right here is we offer free two-day shipping July 11th 50% uh, off free shipping and it has a lot of views you're looking for um, videos that have around a hundred thousand views or more so this one has 448,000 views this one has 3 million views so we can click that and let's pause that let's go down here and let's click shop now and this actually doesn't look like a dropshipping product so let's go back but again we click shop now so we're an engaged shopper and you can go through the entire process and get the Facebook purchase pixel to fire on the store as well. Um, but we're looking for more drop shipping stores. So let's keep going. Let's do, let's actually go with this one. Thus, one with 448,000 views. 
Sorry about that, guys. Shop now. And for some reason, that doesn't work. Let's go back. Now, it actually looks like the date deselected. So let's click that again. 2019. Boom. And okay, let's July 8th. Let's check this one out right here. Pause it. And if this is the product I think it is, this is actually a product that I've sold before. Okay, it's not, it's a different one. Okay, cool. Um, the product I've sold that I was talking about looks just like this and it's called the Flawless Eyebrow. Um, I, I think it actually does the same, I think this might be it. This, no, no, okay, but it's a very similar product, All right? So this store is definitely a drop shipping store and we click the ad, shop now, and we can go through it, get the Facebook purchase picks for the fire, become a, get into the lookalike audience to see more dropshipping ads. If you're able to get into a lookalike audience and see more ads, those ads are gonna be products that are successful and are winning products. So it makes your product research a lot easier. So that's why going as far as possible into a store's funnel is one of the best methods you can use. Now let's go back. Now, you could type in things like free shipping. Um, here's the whole list for you guys. So, free shipping, get yours now, shop now, order now, click here, shop here. Same thing. And again, once you come across these dropshipping stores, you want to add them to your comma feed. That's very, very important. Now, let's move on to the second product research method and all of this will be in the description for you guys to copy and save into your notes or your own Google Docs folder. The next product research method is actually a research tool that I believe Kevin David is a partner on but I'm not 100% sure on that and it's called Shop Inspect. Now the reason why I actually I've tried a lot of different research tools but this one actually might be my favorite and that's why I'm actually recommending it so let's go ahead and go over the shopping spec and I'll show you exactly how to use it so this is what the back end of shopping spec looks like and this is how it works so let's say I wanted to sell a uh, let me think of a product let's let's say baby pacifier because I could have sworn I saw a baby pacifier when we were on Facebook a few minutes ago. So baby pacifier search. And this is why I like shop inspect because it gives you an estimated monthly web searches. So what I like to do is I like to take that and compare it with the search volume on using keywords everywhere. Keywords everywhere is what I really use, but you can use this and compare it against whatever keyword tool that you're using, whether that's keywords everywhere or keyword planner or KW Finder. Um, but I, I just like that it gives you the monthly search volume right in here. And it also gives you a smart score. So what a smart score is, it's basically a, a scale of one to 100. And what's happened is Shop Inspect is comparing how many monthly searches there is for a product compared to the amount of sellers for that product as well. And Shop Inspect also gives you a Google Trend Indicator. So you can see, okay, has this product been in demand and how long has it been in demand for, right? And it also gives you a bunch of different keywords that really relate to that product or are the same keyword for that product. So a baby pacifier is also related to a baby nibbler pacifier or food feeder pacifier. And then when you scroll down here, it actually shows you the products directly from AliExpress and it gives you the product price and the estimated product monthly revenue. So this right here, Fresh Fruit Baby Pacifier. The product price is $2.99 and it has an estimated product monthly revenue of $4.99. That's not a lot. That's not a product that I would go ahead and sell at all. Versus, let's keep scrolling down, this one, baby fruit pacifier I still wouldn't do this one either because only a thousand monthly revenue so keep going keep going keep going and see and as you guys can see it has this product right baby pacifier has about 1600 monthly searches obviously it's a low fish not a low fish a little fish product and you guys can clearly see it here where 
499 or 1119 1896 563 1017 this isn't a product that you'll be able to hit six figures with it's just not going to happen but if you have a bunch of products like this you're going to be able to do a lot more in revenue if you have related products a bunch of little fish products so i wouldn't i wouldn't go after this product let's go ahead and go to a new product let's type in eyebrows because we did see that eyebrow product earlier 135,000 monthly searches this would be a big fish product so let's keep scrolling. So we have eyebrow serum, $11,836 monthly revenue. Magic eyebrows, $2,420. Um, flawless pencil, $1,600. Eyelashes, $1,600. This, this is the product I sold. This is the flawless eyebrow tool right here. I don't know what currency that is. Um, so I can't, you know, I don't know if that's going to be, it's probably way less if you convert it into dollars. Um, Purist Naturals, Orga, no. 50% off Queen's Eyebrows, uh, 15,381. But this is part of the reason I like this tool. And what's even interesting is, if you come up here and select shop, you'll see stores, Shopify stores, selling products related to whatever you typed in. So for example, here we have Sura Brazil products, we have DR Cosmetics, Grand Happy Store, right? These are all stores selling products related to the keyword that you typed in. And you can use this to brainstorm other products that you should, you could be able to sell as well. And let's go to hot trending products up here. In here, these are products that are getting a lot of sales from AliExpress as well. And you can take a look at them here. So this one right here, Magnetic Weight Loss Pats, this month there's 1500 orders right that's insane right and it costs a dollar 69 you would have to check the search volume on that but let's go back travel luggage 2200 orders right and this costs like 32 cents but basically that's kind of how shop inspect works and you can also take a look at best-selling shopify stores down here and the fastest growing shopping Shopify stores as well. Now, I actually reached out to the people over at Shop Inspect and actually got you guys a discount code. And the discount code is my name 20. So it's Ebenezer 20. And you should be able to get Shop Inspect for 20% off. And this is actually one of the research tools that's actually worth the price. So that's actually pretty much it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. I used to walk around in dirty shoes I grew up 10 years later, got the easy 32 I was wearing champion before the shirts was cool We made it blue cause pops was grinding, mom was working too Remember I was rocking double hand-me-downs Now it's a thousand dollar outfit, they can't stand me now